Hey guys, Michael Shu here with an update to my image quality test for the Mavic 2 Pro. So I originally had tested the Mavic Pro original with a negative three sharpness setting, but then YouTube users Fruxen, Paolo, and Framed pointed out that there's a huge gotcha with setting the sharpness setting to lower than zero on the Mavic Pro original in that it actually dithers all the fine details and almost acts as a noise reducer, which is totally not what reduction of sharpness should be. So I decided to go out there with both the Mavic Pro original and the Mavic 2 Pro and test across all the sharpness settings to see how it performs, find the proper sharpness settings to get the most out of each camera and then put them against each other. Let's start with the original Mavic Pro. The Mavic Pro OG here with negative three sharpness looks like a bunch of vomit. This so negative two sharpness, actually a lot of details come come back. So the, the three guys are totally right. And then you go to negative one sharpness, then you get both. Uh, nah, oh. uh, okay, it gets worse and worse after you go from negative one beyond. This is at 800% though, so take it with a grain of salt, please. Um, let's go into plus sharpness. It just gets worse and worse in terms of artificial sharpening up from there. All right. So uh, from here, let's take a look at uh, side by side actually. This way it's a little bit easier to see. You can see that the negative three sharpness is pretty horrific. When you go to negative one, then you get the shingles again. But when you get to zero, you get like shingles plus a lot of mosquito noise, which I am guessing is from the grain of the teeny little sensor. So I would say that yeah, probably negative one would be the kind of compromise between less noise and more detail. All right, now let's take a look at the Mavic 2 Pro. <laughs> now negative three is really fuzzy wuzzy when you're looking at it 800%, uh, but it gets a little bit better at negative two. I would say negative one is probably gonna be, yeah, yeah, that looks pretty good, but the uh, moiré and false colors are uh, kind of, uh, or fake colors are uh, coming in. Uh, actually zero sharpness is looking good. It doesn't look too artificial, but oh, once you get to plus one, it, it, it's a little nasty. Uh, right there, and oh yeah, let's uh, maybe we shouldn't do that. Um, but we're gonna look at negative three. Oh, plus three. Oh my god, plus three is just ugh. okay. Well, uh, we're not gonna go there. Um, we're not gonna go beyond zero on either camera. But my vote is that with um, the Mavic Pro original, negative one or zero is gonna work. I'm gonna stick with negative one. And with the Mavic 2 Pro, since it seems to just blur the image when you go below zero, we're just gonna stick with zero sharpness setting. Now let's put them side to side. Okay, now this is kind of a toughie because like, okay, on the left, sure, you could see finer details, but with the finer details, it's kind of all that mosquito noise and such. And this is the lowest mosquito noise uh, at the this setting, the negative one setting, okay? And with the, on the right at zero, uh, it's fuzzy, but it's it's smoother. And uh, the uh, DJI's official response to this whole softness controversy is that it does raw subsampling, not pixel binning. So um, I think that's kind of what we're seeing here. It's smoother, which is what DJI says is the benefit of raw subsampling, um, but it is softer. So when it comes down to pure sharpness, Mavic 2 Pro loses. Um, and Mavic 1 wins, but it is kind of balanced out with all the craptacular compression and no grain noise. Uh, so, oh man, it's really hard. Um, I would say that pick your poison. Overall, I think the Mavic 2 Pro is still overall better because of dynamic range, better color, the hyperlapse settings of, you know, collision avoidance and such. But if sharpness is your priority for upgrading and the reason why you would even consider the Hasselblad camera, then um, you know what, maybe wait until the next version. Overall, the, the sharpness is a little bit disappointing, but the drone as a whole is very impressive. I've been pretty happy with it. So I think it's just, you know, a matter of like equipment uh, limitations when you try to cram so much into a small teeny little drone. I mean, they're cramming a one inch sensor for the first time on such compact little drones. So I don't think DJI is doing planned obsolescence like some people are crying. Overall, I think the pros outweigh the cons. Um, what do you think from these results? Please let us know in the comments and remember to like and subscribe to this video in order to support us to tell us that you still want us to make these. And a ver apologies for the horrible autofocus because I'm shooting with the GH5 right now and I didn't want to go like and be out of focus, but apparently it just goes out of focus on its own because it can't make up its mind what to focus on. Jesus, 